The topic for this presentation is capillary hemangioma of the orbit. We'll start with introduction. Capillary hemangioma is the most common tumor of the orbit and periorbital area in childhood. Girls are affected more commonly than boys, uh, 3 to 1 ratio. It may present as a small isolated lesion of minimal clinical significance or as a large disfiguring mass that can cause visual impairment and systemic complications. An established tumor is composed of anastomosing small vascular channels without true encapsulation. It is a hematoma which is a disorganized overgrowth of mature tissues normally present in the involved area and believed to be due principally to endothelial cell proliferation. Large or multiple lesions may have association uh, with the viscera which can lead to serious complications such as thrombocytopenia also called Casabac Merritt syndrome with up to 50% mortality and high output cardiac failure and systemic uh, investigation in this case should be considered. The incidence of infantile hemangioma in the general population is around 5% and small proportions of these, especially if a large facial hemangioma uh, is present, will have FACES syndrome. FACES stands for uh, posterior fossa anomalies, hemangiomas, arterial anomalies, cardiac anomalies and eye anomalies. And it is an uncommon disorder of unknown etiology characterized by a large segmental hemangioma of the face and various developmental defects. Now, diagnosis is based on symptoms and signs. Uh, the lesion is usually noticed by the parent, usually in the first few months of life. Approximately 30% are uh, present at birth. Uh, on examination, uh, extensive underlying orbital involvement should always be ruled out uh, in a seemingly purely superficial lesion. Uh, a superficial uh, bright red uh, cutaneous lesion, also called strawberry nevus, uh, is observed uh, on examination as you can see here in the picture. It is quite prominent. Preceptal or deeper tumors appear dark blue or purple through the overlying skin and are most frequently located superiorly. Uh, one of the example is here and through the skin when you see it, it appears a little bit blue. A large tumor may enhance and change in colors to a deep blue during crying or straining but both pulsation and a buoy are absent. Deep orbital tumors give rise to a unilateral fructosis without skin discoloration. Mangiometrous involvement of the palpebral or fornicial conjunctiva is common. Uh, additional hemangiomas uh, on the eyelid or elsewhere are also common uh, in the cases. Imaging is generally performed for other than very small lesions, mainly to rule out more extensive orbital disease. Ultrasound shows medium internal reflectivity and on MRI or CT, the lesion appears as a soft tissue mass uh, in the interior orbit or as an extraconal mass with finger-like posterior expansions, as you can see here. This is extraconal and it looks like a finger-like mass here. The orbital cavity may show enlargement, but there is no bony erosion. Uh, now, the natural course of the disease is characterized by rapid growth uh, three to six months after the diagnosis, followed by a slower phase of natural resolution in which 30% of the lesions resolve by the age of three years and about 75% by the age of seven. Treatment is indicated principally for amblyopia, secondary to induced astigmatism, anisometropia, occlusion or strabismus, and less commonly for tuposmesis, optic nerve compression or exposure keratopathy. Uh, the natural course is uh, demonstrated here in the pictures. 
uh, you can see here in the first picture, uh, the uh, it is not quite as prominent uh, in the first picture uh, uh, at presentation, but in a couple of months, the lesion has become uh, quite prominent. So, uh, in cases of treatment, uh, beta blockers uh, like oral propranolol is now widely used. Uh, the prescription and monitoring should generally be carried out by a pediatrician. Topical preparations including timolol are equally effective with excellent long-term results and no systemic side effects. Uh, so, one of the uh, examples of use of uh, Topical propanolol in, is here. You can see the capillary hemangioma here is quite prominent. But after uh, six months, uh, there is quite an improvement here. The second modality of treatment is steroids, uh, which can be given uh, via injection of triamcinol on acetonide 1 to 2 ml is total of 40 mg per ml over uh, several injection sites or beta 4 mg per ml into a cutaneous or preceptal tumor is usually effective in early lesions. Uh, regression usually begins within two weeks but if necessary second and third injections can be given after about two months. It is advisable not to inject deeply into the orbit for the fear of causing occlusion of the central retinal artery due to retrograde introduction of the Suspension. Other complications include skin depigmentation and necrosis, fat atrophy, and systemic effects such as adrenal suppression. Uh, it can be given as a topical high potency steroid, uh, for example, clobitazole clob propionate uh, cream are sometimes uh, appropriate but are slow to exert their effect. Uh, systemic steroids administered uh, daily over several weeks may be used, particularly if there is a large orbital component or a rapid onset of action is required. Then lasers may be used to close blood vessels and superficial skin lesions uh, less than 2 mm in thickness. Uh, other modalities of treatment include uh, interferon alpha 2A and ventristine. Uh, they may be used for some uh, steroid resistant site threatening lesions. Uh, local resection with cutting cautery or carbon dioxide laser may reduce the bulk of an anterior circumscribed tumor but is usually reserved for the late inactive stage unless a resistant tumor is site or life threatening. So this is it with the orbital capillary hemangioma. If you like the lecture, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all.